Well, hello, I am here with the Walsh College Accounting Department. I'm so excited to be joined by Professor John Black, who is the Chair of Accounting, Professor Maria Gestinger, Professor Rick Birschback, and Professor Joe Lippick. And we're gonna to talk today about why accounting and why accounting at Walsh. So Maria, I'm gonna start with you. Tell us a little bit about why students should pursue and be interested in an accounting degree. Well, the accounting profession is necessary in every type of business. No matter what industry you are interested in, an accountant is needed in that industry. An accounting degree can get you involved in a bunch of different professions, whether it's forensic accounting or if you wanted to go to public accounting or go to corporations and, and provide accounting services there, or you could even do not-for-profit work. There is a tremendous amount of job security in the accounting profession, as well as opportunities for advancement and the accounting profession provides a great standard of living for you. And the best thing about accounting is that really you can do that from anywhere and anywhere in the world, an account is necessary. Oh, that's so good, Maria, because now I'm thinking post-COVID, job security is a big one and knowing that you can do it from anywhere in the world, remote work has just opened up. So there's just so much potential for that. Professor Black. Yeah, sure. Yeah, job security. I mean, that's a big reason to get an accounting degree. I mean, the industries contract and expand, economies go up and down, but companies always need an accountant to uh, measure financial performance. And, uh, and a good rule of thumb is the higher education, the better you'll be able to insulate yourself from economic shock waves. I mean, every, every business needs an accountant. Some have a whole floor of accountants, and the field of accounting is growing. U.S. Department of Labor predicts employment of accountants will grow by 11% through 2029, which is faster than national average. And just, just to echo <clears throat> what Maria said, uh, uh, you'll have a better salary, your earnings power increases, uh, you'll have better access to jobs, more opportunities to advance your degree. Um, and, uh, it, and as Maria mentioned, it, it is very versatile. You can work in a wide variety of businesses. Awesome. Yeah, Rick and Joe, tell us a little bit about why you love accounting and what opportunities you see for students. I think students should realize that when you choose accounting, you're not just choosing a major or a degree, you're choosing a profession. And there's a network out there waiting for you with, uh, yes, they have uh, expectations, but if you meet those expectations, there's lots of opportunities throughout your career. Uh, often I talk to students who are thinking about accounting and they're afraid because, oh, they don't want to sit at a desk all day crunching numbers. Well, there is some number crunching. There is some data analysis and compilation. But most of the accounting work is really communication, communication with your clients, communication with fellow colleagues. And that makes it uh, much more of a, uh, a satisfying job than simply crunching numbers. Yeah, I'd like to piggyback a little bit on what Rick said. Um, in my experience, Working in accounting has opened me up to the opportunity of being able to work with other disciplines and other departments and uh, businesses where I've worked. And it opens up a lot of opportunities to not just work in accounting, but get you exposed to other things that you might want to pursue. Uh, one of the things we know is that people shift careers or they change careers a number of times throughout their life. And uh, accounting can be a good foot in the door to discover other things that you might be really interested in. And then when you get the opportunity to combine accounting with something else that you love, then it doesn't feel like work. It feels more like a passion and that's where you can really shine. Oh, I love that. And I remember something that Professor Black said. He said, accounting is the language. I mean, he, not just Professor Black, but accounting is the language of business. And so if you love business and you love helping businesses grow, accounting is just the perfect field. So let's talk a little bit about why accounting at Walsh. John, tell us why should a student choose Walsh for accounting? Well, sure, yeah. Walsh is a nationally recognized leader in accounting education, and we have graduates in nearly every Fortune 500 company in Michigan. And, and many of our graduates go on to earn their certifications as CPAs and CMAs. And at Walsh, we have a special program. It's called the Fast Track program where you can uh, get your undergraduate and your graduate degree in accounting in as little as five years. Wow. Um, also, we have the, um, the CPA and the CM CMA concentration. So the CPA concentration provides skills and knowledge needed to pass the CPA exam. 
and the CMA concentration prepares students for the CMA designation. Walsh is one of six schools in Michigan that has been endorsed by the Institute of Management Accountants. Yeah, no, that's that's great. That's great. Maria, what do you think? What makes Walsh unique for accounting? Because John, you said it so well is, you know, it just has such a rich history and tradition of strong, solid accounting education. Well, Walsh has a great business reputation. And when students come to Walsh, they will find themselves acclimated with a community of like-minded business professionals. They may not necessarily be the traditional learners where they go to school during the day. They might be engaged in business during their day jobs and then come to school at night. And so they'll have a tremendous support with like-minded people that are in the same position as they are. Yeah, that's so great. That's so great. Rick and Joe, tell us a little bit too about the quality of the courses, especially in this remote environment. So just thinking about how we make them high rigor, but also accessible to students and why that's so important now in the time of COVID. Uh, I, I agree, very, very important. Uh, luckily before uh, the virus hit, uh, we were very prepared. Uh, most of our courses were online and our courses online are, are very rigorous. There, there's lots of information there. There are recorded lectures, there's exams, quizzes, practice items. So we give the student uh, a lot of support as far as materials. And also we give them the support of being able to communicate with their instructors. So good. Uh, I'm gonna comment uh, specifically to one of, the, one of the classes that I teach, which is accounting information systems. Uh, this class is where students are processing transactions in an accounting environment uh, for the first time like they would in a real world. Um, in the introductory and intermediate accounting courses, they're learning the foundations, but in accounting information systems, they're learning the way it would be processed at the mom and pop shop down, a, down the street or at um, a local manufacturer or at Ford and GM and some of the Fortune 500 companies. And the thing that I really like about it is it gives students the opportunity to get hands-on with uh, a systems understanding aid that we use. And I get a lot of feedback from students that have never worked in accounting that they love the idea that, okay, now they're seeing the way things work in the real world. And I also get a lot of comments from students who have been working in the real, real world, but only in computerized accounting systems that now they're getting to see the way the machinery works inside the system. And it, it, it opens our eyes up to an entirely different world that they didn't know before. That's amazing. So yeah. good, John. So good. Talk to us a little bit, Rick, about how a student can prepare for the CPA, because we know that that's an ultimate, you know, standard and, and the end game of where a lot of students want to go. So how do you prepare for the CPA? Well, first of all, uh, students should definitely take a certified exam upon graduation. Uh, the CPA is the most popular certified public accountant, but there's several other C's, as I call them. CMA, Certified Management Accountant, uh, CIA, Certified Internal Auditor, uh, CFE, Certified Fraud Examiner. So the point is, uh, once you finish Walsh, definitely take at least one of these certifications. That will allow you to be a specialist uh, for the rest of your career. The most popular of the certification is the CPA. And for the CPA, you've got to do three things as far as officially to get the license, the CPA license. Uh, no, number one is education. You need an undergrad degree. Doesn't have to be an accounting, but there are certain accounting credits you must take. Uh, that's to take the exam. You must at least have a degree. To be a CPA then, you have to have a total of 150 credits or more, but you don't need 150 credits to take the exam. So once you finish at Walsh with your degree, you should uh, certainly consider one of those exams. So education is number one. You've got to have the degree. Uh, number two is the exam itself. The exam is very rigorous. Uh, it's in four parts. It doesn't just cover accounting, it covers tax, cost accounting, econ, finance, IT, auditing, uh, some very difficult topics. It's a long preparation time, but uh, talk to CPAs out in the field and they will tell you uh, it's worth it. And finally, to be a CPA, you have to have experience, at least one year of qualifying auditing or accounting experience uh, to get the uh, CPA license. So education, the exam, and experience are required for the CPA license. As yeah. far as preparation, students should realize that as they're going through their courses in Walsh, they are preparing for the CPA exam or whatever exam they're going to take. Uh, when we teach uh, depreciation and intermediate accounting, 
We don't then in advanced accounting teach advanced depreciation. They're done with depreciation when they hit intermediate. So realize that in studying for your exams to get a good GPA at Walsh, you're also preparing for the CPA exam. That is so good. And it provides such value and efficiency for students so that the investment of time and the investment of finances really produces a solid return. That is outstanding. One thing that I love about all of you and, and the professors that are in accounting is the real world experience you bring into the classroom. Just in a little bit of time that we have, you know, just give us a few background pieces or bullet items on where you've worked outside of Walsh so that, you know, students can hear, wow, I'm not only getting highly academically qualified faculty, but they also have professional credentials as well and professional experience. So Maria, tell us a little bit about your background. So I started in public accounting. I spent about three and a half years there I was a municipal and school district auditor. And from there, I transitioned out of public accounting into the public school finance arena. I spent 28 years there in a public school finance career, and then I started teaching at Walsh. That's my background. That's great, that's great. So, so Susie, you could be serving professions and you can be serving companies like educational missions and institutions mm -hmm. so well with this. Okay, John, tell us about yours. Yeah, sure. Well, I, I have more than 36 years of industry experience, most of which are were at TRW, where I worked nearly 30 years in finance and accounting. And before that, I worked for Lear Siegler as an internal auditor and also Comerica Bank as a bank auditor. That's great, Rick? I'm a little different. Uh, way back when I worked in public accounting for Ernst & Young and also PricewaterhouseCoopers, but then I made the transition because uh, I had a passion for teaching. So uh, 42 years ago, 41 years ago, I decided that was my uh, career. And I've been at Walsh 40 years uh, teaching. I'm still trying to get things right. Give me a couple more years and I will. But uh, I've been a full-time educator for more than four decades, and I'm proud of that. Very proud of that. We're so happy to have you. And, you know, EY and Price Waterhouse, those are top brands and top companies. And so we're proud to say we have, we have faculty from there, and we've had students and interns, and it's just a great experience. Joe? So my uh, path is even a little bit more unorthodox than Rick's was. Um, so I've been in professional accounting, a combination of public and private accounting for about 20 years. Um, I started in private accounting, got my uh, kind of cut my teeth, and then spent five years in public accounting, working at a small firm for here in Troy for about three years, and then worked at Plant Moran for a couple of years, and then uh, made a transition to private accounting, working for an IT staffing company in Detroit. That was for about six and a half years. And um, the thing I liked about working for the small firm when I came out of Walsh was the fact that working for a small firm, you're working with clients who are uh, not as sophisticated as the Fortune 500 or the larger companies. They don't have the resources that GM and Apple and Home Depot have. So you see a lot of stuff that is really kind of sloppy and messy that I got a lot of great experience working in a small firm kind of cleaning some things up and got exposure to things that I might not have seen if I'd been working in a small or larger firm. So one of the things I do say to my students is don't discount um, going to work for some of the smaller firms. There's a lot of good opportunity and, and doors can be open there too. Yeah, that is so wise. And so the students get to benefit from all of this collective experience in the classroom, which is just so rich and engaging. I love it. Last question, I want uh, to ask John this and others can chime in. Tell us a little bit about the MAC and the MACW and how students can get started in either of those. Yeah, sure. Well, the MAC is designed for students who don't have an accounting undergraduate degree, but who wish to enter the field of accounting. The coursework will prepare the students to sit for the CPA exam and ultimately attain a, an accounting position in public accounting, private business, or governmental accounting. The MACW, as we call it, is the Masters of Accounting for Accounting Undergraduates, those who have an undergraduate degree in accounting. And uh, it's for those uh, accounting graduates that want to advance in their careers. It offers students the opportunity to attain the required 150 credit hours for CPA licensure um, while obtaining a graduate degree at the same time. Um, it's a 30 credit hour degree that can be completed in a little over a year. Wow. Yeah, that's great. And what you're hearing here is that Walsh does a great job of really making sure that students are prepared academically and professionally 
but that we make such a strong effort to make sure you have a solid return on your investment. So thank you so much, accounting department. And we hope that those listening jump right in and sign up and, and enroll so that they can start their accounting career today. So thank you so much.